Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining my video on cost and volume efficient current measurement for fast switching inverters. I'm Lukas Frega and I'm working for Block Transformers um, company based in Verden in Germany. And uh, before that, I did my Master of Science at RWTH Aachen University. And I'm currently at the same time proceeding my PhD with the uh, Leibniz University of Hanover. And at Block, I'm uh, responsible in the pre-development department um, for power electronics and especially for hardware and hardware close control. So what the motivation behind looking a little bit more into um, current measurement of fast switching inverters, well, we see a trend that goes towards more and more power electronic converters pretty much everywhere. So we have PV inverters in the green energy, um, we have grid high charger inverters for electric vehicles, we have drive inverters um, that replace formerly directly connected AC machines. And in all those inverters, the current sensor is um, a quite expensive and or large component. So when we look into different options, we have four sensors and our current transformers, which both uh, cost several euros a piece. And then we have shunts, which are cheap themselves, but then they need some isolation or precise sampling, which then again makes them a little bit more expensive. But if we could get rid of this um, isolation and the precise sampling, shunt measurement could probably be a very cost efficient solution. And this is the concept that I want to present to you today um, to do the shunt measurement at the low side MOSFET of a half bridge circuit. So an inverter pretty much consists of three half bridge uh, cells. So it makes sense to, um, first of all, look at the shunt or at the current measurement for one half bridge of those of this inverter. What does low side uh, shunt measurement mean? It means we just place the shunt directly at the bottom MOSFET of the um, half bridge switching cell, which means it's also at the same voltage um, as the DC minus or the negative DC um, bus. So the big advantage of this position is that we have constant voltage at the sensor. So you can see it here on the right hand side, the voltage at the sensor is always constant and it's directly connected to the uh, negative DC voltage. It's the same for all the three phases. So we can also just connect the digital ground of the microcontroller to it and we just uh, get rid of our isolation problems. The big problem of this position is the current is discontinuous due to the switching nature of the bottom MOSFET. So we only see the, the current when the uh, bottom MOSFET is turned on. And there are basically two solutions exist for this and solution one is the one that is currently used in, um, in all applications or in applications where we use a low side shunt measurement is we just have a very precise sampling in the um, directly at the center of the turn on period of the bottom MOSFET and then we directly have the, um, the current that we want to measure. However, when this time gets really small, also the time slot that is available for the sampling of the ADC and for the settling actually of the ADC gets really small. So we need a quite fast ADC um, that is then once again quite expensive. And this is why I came up with a new solution. It's uh, to just low pass filter actually the measured signal. So we still have the discontinuous signal at the sensor, but then we um, do a low pass uh, filtering of this uh, signal which is shown here with the blue dashed line and we have the uh, we come up with the average current the sensor which is just the input current iac which is coming here um, in the towards the uh, half bridge cell times the duty ratio of transistor t2 and then when we have this current also of course we have to do some reconstruction of this phase current because now we measure somehow wrong current or we measure the current that is not really the current that is flowing into the cell. And well, this is a pretty obvious solution. Um, we just do the calculations that I just so showed you the other way around and we get the AC current that is flowing into the half bridge cell. So what it is, we just divide the average shunt current, the average measured current that we measure with the ADC by the duty ratio of the transistor T2 of the bottom side transistor. And this is also shown over here. So we have the duty ratio for this phase, um, just a one period signal with a modulation index of one. 
And then we have the current flowing into the cell here with the uh, shown with the solid line, and we have the measured current that appears at the ADC here shown with the dashed line. And we see that for low duty ratios of the transistor T2, we also don't really measure a current at the shunt anymore. And this is really somehow a problem for us because, well, when we don't uh, measure a current anymore, when the duty ratio is really low, we somehow have to uh, get this current from somewhere else. But luckily, we are in a three phase system and we know that all the three phases uh, will always up to, add up to zero. So, what do we do? Well, we just say um, we take when this uh, duty ratio here is really low, we just take the current from the other two phases we need. We use the negative sum of the other two phases and we are done. And then we just have to do some accuracy analysis because we always have to uh, know which current to use. So we can either use this current or this current, or we could find some other solution. And um, there's a crossover point actually, which is around here, where we move from the direct reconstruction, which would be this uh, calculation here towards the reconstruction from the other two phases and where this brings us the better results. And this is the third step of the reconstruction algorithm. We combine those currents for an optimal accuracy and then we are pretty much done and have our currents back. So how good is this accuracy? Um, there's a lot more detailed description in the paper. I just want to show you the result here. So um, what you see here on the right hand side is the loss of bits in accuracy. So we have um, an ADC, which has some resolution maybe of 12 or 14 bits, depending on your system. And then um, because you are only taking this average current and because of all this ca those calculations that you do, you lose some accuracy um, of this maximum accuracy of the ADC. This is shown here. The dashed line is the um, the average loss of accuracy over one period. Um, so you can imagine we have diff different duty ratios to during one period. So we also have a different loss of accuracy depending on um, which angle we are at right now. And then the solid line here shows us the maximum loss of bits um, during one period. And we see that um, actually the average loss is pretty much the same independently of the modulation index. So we can even go to over modulation and we still stay uh, with less than one bit loss in the resolution. And only when we go now to the uh, maximum losses, we see that it's increasing and it's uh, almost increasing up to three bits lost accuracy, which is quite a bit, but it's only uh, really important for dynamic systems. And then we can also uh, see that when we think back to the beginning, I said, we now have a lot of time for sampling. So we can also do a lot of oversampling, which means that uh, the um, that we can probably just afford um, an, an ADC that has a much higher resolution compared to a directly or accurate sampling method. So here are some measurement results. I built up a silicon cover test inverter and implemented the, um, the algorithm on a 160 megahertz microcontroller with a 12-bit resolution ADC. And you can see here that the results actually look quite similar. So this is the reference measurement. This is the, um, the calculated result from the microcontroller. And then down here, we also have the frequency spectrum of the um, of the ADC, which zoomed in here a little bit. And now we see that um, for for the fundamental and also for the first harmonics, it looks pretty much the same. And then we see that we have a large noise floor, which is due to a probably somehow poor PCB design. And this brings us to my conclusion. I showed you a cost efficient solution for current measurement. It's especially suitable for grid applications and low cost drives. Um, and well, for future work, the filter could be extended to a higher order. It's now a first order RC filter, which is um, well quite cheap, but also not really that good. And especially the um, noise floor could be improved by careful PCB redesign. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, I think there's a um, question and answer session now. And 
otherwise just contact me.